Hi, it's Elaine Friend here out at Limantour Beach in Point Reyes National Seashore, Northern California. I came here today to answer a few questions. No, I came here to do my very, very favorite best self-care and I find my mind gets so clear when I exercise and then meditate and then do a little yoga on the beach that I feel really open and wanting to help and wanting to share. So a lot of wonderful questions come to me via my email and I wanted to answer a couple. This one right now is about being startled. This person, two different people actually emailed me about this. One was about being surprised at work and the other one was about just any kind of thing that might startle them out of the, just that came out of the blue. A big noise or someone suddenly going into, you know, a lot of volume and anger or a glass dropping and breaking. So the first question is, are we more likely to be startled? And of course we are because we're paying more attention and scanning our environment more. And the second question is, how do I prepare for it and what do I do about it? I guess that's kind of a two part. So the first thing I want to say about how to prepare is to look, listen like a horse, scan your environment like a prey animal. If you've ever tried to pet a deer, you know, and I try all the time to see how close I can get to them, you know that a deer is aware of you entering their environment instantaneously. It's because they're always scanning their environment, and not so much with their eyes, but more with their ears. So go ahead and take a little bit of time to notice what you're hearing, even right now. Take a moment right now to close your eyes and scan your environment and see what are all the different noises and sounds that you can hear. The trick as you do this is to categorize them or notice them without paying specific attention to any of them. So there are sounds that are nearby and far away, sounds that are loud and soft, sounds that are more or less constant like the waves, and sounds that are intermittent like a dog's bark or something else startling. Once you train yourself to scan your environment carefully and be aware of all the different sounds, what you'll discover is that your brain can notice when new ones come along. And sure, you're gonna be startled, but it won't be so upsetting or so off-putting, you know, it won't set you off, I mean. And then, how do we, that's one way to prepare about it. How do we deal with it when it happens? The first thing I'd like to say is I think it's really important that you're nice, you're kind to yourself about it. Let me just say right now, it's normal. If you weren't the one who was being more startled by it, then your gift of your more aware, noticing, processing brain wouldn't benefit your community or the world, right? We are the ones who are supposed to be startled. We're the ones who are supposed to have those bigger reaction and notice things more. So the first technique I wanna give you is embrace it. I'm startled. Thank goodness, I'm the one. I'm the one who noticed that something's startling and that we need to be careful and be aware and take note. We need to step back for a moment. Okay. Technique number two, besides expecting it and being appreciative of your brain for its strong reaction, the next thing you need to do is be so gentle with yourself and realize you're going to need some time for your heart rate to return to normal, for your brain to stop worrying so much, and you get to decide how much time that's gonna be. And you can train people in your family or at your workplace or in your, your friend circles that you need time after being startled. So I'm gonna recommend that you just, if a startle happens, try this. Set a five minute timer on your phone. And for five minutes, don't do anything but take care of yourself. Whatever that means. Jump up and down, do the nitric oxide dump, close your eyes and breathe, ask for a hug, Give yourself a hug. Give yourself some nurturing touch. Do some tapping. Do whatever you need to do. I love, especially love brain tapping, which I can even do through my hat. Do whatever works for you to return to a more optimal level of arousal. Five minutes. And remember that closing your eyes during that time, if it's a safe environment, is ideal. Now, you might be in a hurry to get the kids to school, but hey, guess what? If something gets you like that, you're not gonna be a good driver or a good parent or a good you know, boss or whatever it is that you need to do. 
So take your five minutes, give the middle finger to the world and take that five minutes, pull over on the shoulder, close your eyes, put on some great rock and roll music. <laughs> Try to think what that would be for you. I don't know even what it would be for me. I'm not sure, but most music would work for me. Okay, so that's your second one is when it happens, take the time you need. And if that felt like more than enough time, you might even be able, if you practice this a lot, you can dial your time back. You might even be able to do it in one minute. And finally, the third thing that you can do when you've been startled that will help is talk it out. It's so amazing how talking about what has happened helps your brain process it. It helps move the startle response out of your body and out into the world. So I talked about moving and doing lots of self-care, but it's really great if there's a trusted friend or family member or someone you can pick up the phone and call and just tell them what happened. I use this a lot. Unfortunately, I'm not that great of a driver because I'm always processing deeply about something other than what I'm doing in the car. I'm fine on the highway or on the roads. I drive really well. I pay close attention, but when I'm sort of, I don't know, backing out of a driveway, I'm likely to hit something. And that happened to me just a few weeks ago. I hit a retaining wall and it startled me so much. I was so upset. I found myself, you know, breathing really fast and quickly. Remember, fast breathing is a predictor of an anxiety attack. And wanting to cry and on the verge of tears. And so what did I do? I pulled over and I picked up the phone and I called my spouse. And I just said what happened and what my experience was. And one of the things I think is really important, even with your spouse, even with people who know you better than anybody, it's really important when you need to talk about something to tell them that all you need to do is tell your story and all you would like from them is compassion. To say things like, wow, that sounds really scary. Are you okay? Is there anything I can do to support you? So talking it out is your third technique for dealing with startle. I hope this is helpful. This is Elaine Friend. Please subscribe and click that little bell so that you get notified when I answer a new question on YouTube. I really appreciate you joining me here on Lehman Tour Beach in Point Reyes National Seashore, Northern California. Talk to you soon.